Hi friends, it's Dana here. Today I'm reading you a story about a cicada and you may be wondering what is a cicada or at least that's what I wondered when I moved to Knoxville because in Wisconsin we don't have very many and in Knoxville they're really loud. They're like meow, 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 all summer long and they're big and have big eyes and they look like little, I guess like alien creatures. Um, the first time I saw one, I was kind of freaked out. But I learned that they're actually kind of cool. In fact, this year is a 17-year hatch of a cicada type. And what that means is that this little guy was in the ground for 17 years before it is going to come out this summer. And they come out in huge quantities to make sure that they survive to the next 17 year uh, emergence. And so evidently it's gonna be so loud that my ears are gonna ring. It's gonna be 100 decibels. Can you believe that? That's really loud. So I think I'm gonna get myself some earplugs because it's about to get real here in Knoxville. So let's he let's go, let's read about Cecily Cicada. She's also a brood X, which is the 17 year cicadas. And you get to learn a little bit about her life in this book. It is by Kita Helmetog Murdoch and Patsy Helmetog. Here we go. In her dreary earthen hole, neath the sassafras tree, on Hugh Coper Street in Washington, D.C., lived a hopeful nymph cicada waiting for the time she could crawl up top and feel the sunshine. The last thing she remembered before digging her hole was her solemn mama saying, Cecily, be bold. Be patient, dear, and persevere and never do give up. For in 17 years, you'll get back on top. In 17 years, you'll know what to do and something amazing will happen to you. For 17 years, she waited day and night for time and temperature to be just right. Cecily ate roots, then ate some more, but eating roots was such a bore. So, so she was stalwart and passed the time doing 17 things that don't fit in rhyme. <laughs> For while she awaited that far off day, she had to be clever and learn to play and entertain herself till the soil felt right. At 64 degrees, she could crawl up to the light. Once, when thinking of things to do, a friendly worm came passing through. He asked, why are you waiting down in this hole? She said, that is something I cannot control. In fact, I wish I could go up with you but I must wait, my waiting's not through. In 17 years will come the day when I get to go outside and play. One morning in May, she awoke with a start. This was the moment she knew in her heart. Somehow she knew she must get to the top. She began digging and digging and did not stop. Her head popped out in the dim moonlight, but her climbing continued that starry night. After so many years, she felt so free. She climbed up the bark of the sassafras tree. When she got near the top, she suddenly froze. She felt stiff from her nose to her toes. She couldn't move. She was stuck in one spot. She tried to crawl and found she could not. She wiggled and wriggled with all her might, but no matter what, her feet held tight. She thought, I have to get out of here. Her body trembled with outright fear. She began to shake. She couldn't stop shaking when all of a sudden she heard something breaking. She heard a rip and then a crack and felt the night air on her back. She tried moving her feet and found they would. Then she took a step and found she could. But why had she been stuck in one place? She looked up and saw the dried brown case. Her new self was pale with wings that were green. Her skin was translucent with a beautiful sheen. When the sun came up on the beings who sleep in, Cecily's color began to deepen. Suddenly a question entered her mind. 
How can I leave part of me behind? With that withered brown case, used, it used to be me, but now it's dried up and stuck to the tree. She saw from her branch a most curious thing, a creature like she was with elegant wings. You look puzzled, but look around. There are hundreds of us crawling out of the ground, climbing up trees and leaving our past, spreading our wings to embrace life at last. We're leaving our old self stuck on the trees while we fly up with the ladybugs, robins, and bees. Oh, it's wonderful thing to fly. Jump off that branch, give it a try. It's amazing. Her mom had been right, as Cecily found on her very first flight. You know how it is if you've had a long wait. When that thing finally happens, isn't it great? If you've been in the dark hole, nothing is duller. Imagine emerging, surrounded by color. Below her were flowers and beautiful plants, birds and dragonflies, spiders and ants. Children were playing in Glover Park and parents were dragging them home before dark. For two days, her red eyes took in all the sights and the sounds and the smells of springtime delights. There were savory flowers that smelled so sweet and tasty new leaves for her to eat. Then after three days came a glorious sound from the bushes and treetops and all around, from male cicadas, both high and low, a chorus of voices began to grow. For some humans, it may sound like a buzz, but Cecily knew just what it was, a beautiful, joyful, and thankful song of creatures who'd lived in the ground for too long. Then she heard the sweetest voice, one that made her heart rejoice. Cecily looked up and to her surprise was another cicada with stars in its eyes. When you see a cicada, please give her a smile, cause you may not see one again for a while. Just look at the grown up who's reading to you. When the cicadas come back, you'll be grown up too. What an incredible thing. That is all I have for that, friends. I hope you enjoyed this book all about Cecily Cicada. And I hope even though it'll be deafening this summer, you get a chance to see these 17 year old wonders. I hope you have a great day and thanks for reading with me. Bye-bye.